I'm Naisha McCauley and you're watching AccessTV.org. Good morning and welcome to the challenge. As always, first and foremost, we want to thank God for another opportunity and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in. Uh, we have a very exciting guest with us this morning, uh, someone who I've grown to know and to admire uh, for his leadership, uh, for his uh, management and and uh, by all means, uh, his dedication and faithfulness to uh, the work that has been assigned to his hands. Uh, we're here this morning with a candidate for uh, National uh, Baptist uh, Convention USA President, uh, Dr. Boise Kemper, who is currently serving uh, as the Connecticut State Missionary Baptist Convention's President. Good morning, Dr. Kim. Good morning, Russell. Well, it is a delight, man, to have you. I can't tell you how uh, much it means to me to have you be a part of the program. Uh, you know, I've obviously, uh, you know, been a part of uh, uh, helping with the work that uh, you're doing it at the convention, and uh, it, it is indeed my honor to have you this morning. I'm delighted to uh, be here with you, Russell, and certainly appreciate your contribution uh, to the Connecticut State Missionary Baptist Convention as uh, you chair the Social Justice uh, Committee there. Thank you very much for uh, having the confidence in me uh, and giving me uh, your support and your guidance, uh, you know, to uh, take on those endeavors. I, I think a lot of folks uh, think that the, the work of the church, if you will, is sometimes just inside those four walls and uh, folks don't know necessarily that a lot of uh, what goes on outside of the four walls is really uh, the work of the church. Certainly, I, I think that we uh, certainly have to understand that the work is not done on the inside, that the work is done uh, primarily uh, on the outside, reaching and touching uh, individuals who are not on the inside. Well, you know, uh, the church has uh, for many years and still does, you know, face, uh, you know, real strong charges about not living up to uh, what it was supposedly designed to do. And uh, my hope this morning was that we would kind of dispel some of those myths, if you will, and, and talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, uh, exactly what kinds of things the church are involved in and, and why. And, and I want you, if you will, Dr. Kimber, to share as much as you can, uh, you know, your vision uh, for the, uh, the National Baptist Convention and, uh, uh, you know, talk about some of those things that we're trying to tackle uh, now uh, because of the, uh, the current state of the church, if you will. I, I think that uh, the church must never forget where uh, she's come from. Mm. And we must never forget that uh, it was the movement of the civil rights uh, that opened doors for uh, African Americans who are involved, not only in our churches, but who are involved in the community. Mm. And many of us have uh, forgotten about uh, what got us to where uh, we are. Sure. Uh, we feel as though we've gotten there uh, just by ourselves. Mm. Uh, but God works through people That's right. in order to move his agenda uh, forward. Mm. Mm. And, so, and so the black church uh, certainly must continue to deal with social justice uh, uh, throughout uh, its community, uh, throughout uh, the city, throughout its states in which uh, it, uh, it is. Social justice uh, is still uh, alive, but many uh, of our constituency, many of our leaders who did not come 
up under the civil rights movement right. certainly do not respect what the civil rights movement stands for. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that, uh, Dr. Kimber. Uh, I think that there has not been enough uh, explanation, if you will, and, and, and part of it, if you will, is, 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 is ours too, uh, because we have a responsibility to share and to teach others. Uh, I think in some respects, uh, we've been so busy doing the work, if you will, that we haven't spent enough time training and teaching and educating, which I believe is uh, uh, you know, definitely the responsibility of the church as well. Wouldn't you agree? I agree with that. I agree that, that uh, we must keep the light burning. When it comes to social justice, we are still in a fight in America. Uh, there is still racism. Uh, there is still those who uh, feel as though we ought to still be riding in the back of, on the back of the bus, on the back seat of the bus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and so uh, uh, we must deal with this digital divide. We must deal uh, with uh, education. We must deal with police brutality. We must deal with uh, housing uh, that, that our people uh, will be able to understand what is really transpiring in America today. From the biblical standpoint, uh, we were always told that we were to feed the hungry and close the naked yeah. and to visit those who are incarcerated, who are in prison. That has been a mandate for us. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the church has gotten so commercial uh, that it is marketing itself to see who they can reach how many people they can reach, and how much money they can raise. Mm. And not so much concern about the well-being of individuals who do not understand, who cannot articulate the issues uh, that are set before us today. Wow. You know, that is uh, uh, very telling, in my opinion, because I think there is a digital divide. I think there is uh, obviously a generation, if you will, uh, gap. Uh, that it separates us. And it would seem to me that uh, those folks who have not understood uh, what it takes or what it took for us to evolve as a country mm -hmm. uh, into the country that we are now, uh, it, you know, the church, if you will, should be leading the way. And I think if we really got down to the heart of the matter, Doc, uh, what we're talking about is a, a sense of morality and a sense of equity, if you will. And I think there's no other place, uh, uh, you know, uh, other than the church that can, can be clear about what our moral compass should be and uh, the differences between right and wrong and, and what's fair and what's equitable for, for all people. Would you agree? I agree with that. It is, it is the largest institution that African Americans have. And so we, 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 we must uh, use this institution to continue to open doors uh, for uh, those who are unable to open the door for themselves. Every, every, every African American organization that exists today has come out of the black church. Mm. And so the black church um, has proven its worth in the past, yes, and now she is somewhat now trying to reprove her worth mm. in this 21st century. That is interesting as well because I think most people forget that. I think that they forget that the foundation for organizations like the NAACP and the Urban League, mm -hmm. all of those things that are supposedly our vanguards who uh, created these opportunities were actually given birth out of the church. And we have allowed these uh, these organizations to uh, dismiss where they were founded and where they came out of. Mm. And, and many of our constituency uh, helped to keep the doors of these organizations open yeah. so that individuals can come in for service. Yeah, that is, uh, uh, you know, I think something that is worthy of a lot, lot more discussion. Uh, in fact, if you will, uh, Doc, I, I want us to, uh, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, to uh, uh, necessarily be casting blame, but, but really pointing more towards 
uh, you know, the things that are in front of us and trying to address the, uh, the issues that have led us into those, uh, you know, those places where, uh, you know, we become lost and, and try to write, uh, uh, you know, this direction and try to, you know, turn the tide, uh, I think is part of what you're planning to do as National Baptist Convention president. And, and how you plan to do that, I'd like to talk, I'd like to talk if we can a lot more about. Well, well the, the National Baptist Convention was founded in 1880 in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay. And, and, and she was founded upon two principles. And those two principles were mission and evangelism. Mm. Our forefathers and mothers were concerned about those brothers and sisters who were in Africa mm. uh, and, and who did not have what uh, American people had at that particular time. We mm -hmm. did not have much, but we had more than they had, and our forefathers and mothers was concerned uh, about it. Uh, I, I contend that if we do not return back to, and I'm not saying going back, right, I'm right. saying return back to what our forefathers and mothers uh, started and built uh, this convention upon, then I believe that this convention will become irrelevant in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So our responsibility to our forefathers, mm -hmm. our responsibility to our roots, uh, to the foundation, to, uh, to what uh, has brought us here, uh, to America and has what have made us a part of the landscape here is is as important as being here uh, and trying to be a part of of developing this new world. Well, I, I think that we must uh, continue to move forward. Uh, uh, one plants, one waters, and God gives the increase. Our forefathers and mothers planted it mm. and so we 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 must continue to water what has been planted in order to be able to reap the harvest mm, mm, mm. doc i tell you you know you've got a tall order uh you know before you mm -hmm. uh i certainly have witnessed uh you know your energy your drive your enthusiasm you know your leadership and uh, it's been quite remarkable, and I don't have to patronize you. I think mm -hmm. it kind of speaks for itself. But just your willingness, mm -hmm. if you will, to take it on uh, during this very tumultuous time, I mm -hmm. call it. Uh, you know, when, when folks are, are depending, if you will, so much on government mm -hmm. uh, and, and not enough on God, if you will, to me, uh, to, to, to point them back to, to God and to point them back to their roots, uh, you know, uh, in our communities, uh, you know, both locally and abroad, uh, it seems to be uh, the priority. Is that, would that be fair to say? Has to be, has to be a, 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 a priority. Uh, we, we must go back and uh, uh, reclaim our youth and young adults. Hmm. Uh, we, must, we, 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 must, we must look at how we evangelize them how we bring them back to uh, the fold. Many of uh, our young people, when they uh, go off to college, and when they come back home, they never come back to our churches. Mm. Because they, they, they say, we still are doing some of the same old things right. when they left. Right. Uh, Brother John is still uh, the chairman of the Deacon Board. Right, right, right. Has been there 40 years. Right, and, right. And Brother Ali is still yeah. the chairman of the trustee uh, right, right. Uh, board. Right. And, and they have not made room for our young people yeah. to be a part of the establishment and be a part of, of, of uh, of the church, sure. uh, that they may show their ability uh, and, and and use that education that their mothers and fathers and even those who are at the church have helped to support them to get their education. Wow, wow, that's very, very telling. And I think it's absolutely mm -hmm. true. I ran into a lady this morning on my way here to the studio and uh, it was very plain. She said uh, to her, she said, one of the reasons why I haven't come back is because I didn't feel like I belonged. Mm -hmm. She said, I'd, I'd been in church, but uh, you know, I, I, until I uh, could become a part of, of some auxiliary, the usher board or, or the uh, women's choir or something, I, I just didn't feel like I was 
you know, a part of what was going on. And so what we're saying is, is that uh, younger folks aren't uh, a part of it because nobody is, is offering them the opportunity to show uh, their skills and to, uh, to demonstrate their abilities, and so uh, they're feeling left out. Well, why would you have an individual who has an MBA sit out in the audience and not be able to show their talent and to help you to develop a substantial budget for your church? Yeah. Why would you have an educator uh, sitting there and who's able to write a curriculum for Sunday school, who's mm. able to write a Bible uh, curriculum. We must use the talents within our congregation in order to make our congregation more valuable. Mm. That, that means that we're not pushing people aside that has been there, but we're trying to advance our congregation and advance the people within mm. our congregation mm. because the people that are coming there most likely now are somewhat more advanced than the people who are there. Absolutely. So how do we overcome the feeling of being threatened that you know somehow you're being replaced, if you will, or, or how do we, you know, I know the Bible says that we're not given the spirit of fear, but it mm. certainly seems that some are intimidated, if you will, by those who, who possess skills and talents that they don't have. Well. Uh, we, we, we still must understand that there is a time and season Amen. for what you do uh -huh. and how you do it. Mm. And you ought to know your season. Mm, mm, mm. And you ought to know when time is up. Absolutely. And then you ought to be able and willing to train younger people uh, for the positions and the spots that are available uh, in the near future and that you are holding at this particular time. Why hold a position 40 years? Mm -hmm. Now, I know you've been pastoring yourself for quite some time. Give yes. us a little bit uh, about yourself. I know you're not one, you know, you. I know most folks would not necessarily characterize you as this, but I've found you to be a pretty humble servant. Well, my, I, I, want, I, want, I want competency around me. Mm. And, and, and I try not to be a hands-on person. If, if we agree upon what your role is, then I'm expecting you to do what we have talked about or what is in the job description that we have discussed. Mm. I do not have to sit and watch you uh, look over your shoulder uh, to see whether or not you're capable or able of doing what we've talked about. I would not sit and talk with you if I did not feel as though you're able to carry out the mandate of what we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. And your experience as a pastor uh, for some 20, 30 years now. Some 35 years now. 35 years now. Yeah. Whoa, man. I didn't I didn't even figure you for that, Doc, but yeah. that, that, that's quite incredible. So you've been a part of the church since you left college. Oh, oh before uh, going to college, I started preaching at 15. Wow. Uh, age 15, and so that's where, and I'm 55 today, and so, wow. so that's where uh, I have, what I've been doing, and that's been my life. Wow, wow, that's yeah. incredible stuff. Yeah. I, I think that uh, folks, you know, sort of mischaracterize how noble the profession is, but I think the calling itself is actually more than folks realize it is, too, as well. It, I've noticed that there's a lot of folk uh, who call themselves, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, preachers who are right. out there in our community. Uh, those folks, you know, who uh, have not had the training, mm -hmm. have not had the, you know, the schooling and those kinds of things are out there now preaching, if you will, to folk in our community and and they're being misled. I know the Bible talks about false prophets, but 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 what what would you say about I, I, that? I'm not so I'm not so sure that I would that I would call them false uh, prophets. Okay. But, but what I would say that there is no substitute for training yeah. and for a trained individual in this day and time. Uh, Big Mama is even reading now uh -huh. and, and, and understanding the scripture even uh, more. And so whoever decides that they have been called, then there is a part of preparation. Yeah. You, 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 it's, it's not a call by itself right. without being prepared to carry out the mandate of right. the call. Right, right. So, so you, you have to know what you're called to do. Oh, yes. If you're called to do something, then that's, there's a, a presumption that you know 
what that is that you're called to do. Well, you ought to, you ought to know you ought to know what your call is. Yeah. You know, some pastors, some evangelists, yeah. and some prophets, and uh, 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 whatever. But you ought to know what your calling is. Yeah. Everybody called is not the pastor. Yeah. Everybody called is not to be an evangelist. Yeah. You you may have a, you may have a call of just uh, uh, feeding the hungry. Mm, you may mm. have a prison uh, ministry. You may have a, 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 a social justice ministry. Mm, mm -hmm. So so you need to understand what your calling is Absolutely. in order to carry out the mandate in which God has called you. And I, I gotta I gotta throw this in, Doc. And I know you're pressed with time. Again, I want to thank you for coming. But you know I got we I want to touch just a little bit on the on the fact that most folks think that the church is, is some four walls, it's some big building that people, you know, uh, have to attend. Uh, it, 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 I mean, I think we've somehow, you know, forgotten to, you know, that people, real, that people should realize that the church are, are believers, mm -hmm. like you and I. They're, they're the church, when we say the church, we're talking about us. Well, the, the, the church is a place for uh, servanthood. Mm. Uh, you don't come to church just to sit. You come uh, to serve, mm. not just to serve the church, but to serve humanity mm. and, and 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 mankind. Uh, we've gotten we've gotten in in in, in the situation of where uh, we want to serve the church. He's never told us to serve the building. Amen. Uh, he's told us to serve humanity. Amen. And so uh, until we began to serve those outside of the church, mm. then we will continue to have the problems in which we have this day and time. We got killings everywhere. What's the church saying? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. We, got, we, got, we got education problems with, within our uh, uh, local school. What, what is the church saying? Right. We got right. governmental problems. Right. What is, what is, what is the uh, right. church saying? Right. Uh, the church must be the voice for uh, the disenfranchised and for those who cannot articulate the issue themselves. Mm. And if the church is not the voice, then who will be the voice? For amen. Our amen. Amen. And when amen. I talk about the church, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about pa the pastor and amen. the people of the church. Amen. Amen. And that's part of the reason why we we feel very blessed to have this as our part of our platform. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is grassroots TV uh, that we're developing here, and this medium actually goes out uh, far beyond. Uh, our local, mm -hmm. uh, our local jurisdiction, and so uh, we understand, you know, the charge that you've given mm -hmm. to us, and that, uh, you know, how how uh, our responsibility uh, goes beyond, uh, you know, just our local congregations, if you will. And so, you know, Doc, I can't tell you, you know, it, it's been extraordinary this morning. I I certainly know that. Uh, uh, the church is in good hands. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, you will make an incredible uh, uh, president, a national president, and I think that uh, uh, we all, you know, uh, here in, in Connecticut uh, should feel honored and privileged that you are uh, showing uh, the willingness to, to take on that kind of leadership role, and uh, we want to thank you this morning for sharing your vision with us. Any parting words for us? Well, thank you, Russell. We certainly appreciate uh, what you do as a person and uh, your energy and challenging us uh, to become uh, better individuals uh, for the people of God. And so you have been that, that light and uh, you have been that worker. And so I pray that you continue to allow God to lead you and that you will do greater things than what you're doing now. Amen. Remember, uh, this is the challenge. Uh, and we've had with us Dr. Boise Kimber, uh, the uh, up uh, and coming, uh, in my opinion, hopefully the new uh, National Baptist Convention president, uh, our president here for the Connecticut State Missionary Baptist Convention. Uh, thanks again. And again, remember, uh, be blessed.